time and time again, I see people making the same mistakes with their pet portraits. So I thought it'd be good to go through these mistakes today and you can see if you're guilty of any of them. So let's start with probably the mistake that leads to the least good drawings, which is not getting the proportions right, not getting an accurate sketch. I cannot stress enough how important it is to take your time and get the sketch right. If you get something a little bit wrong, it's going to make the whole drawing look wrong. Even if you did the most amazing shading, it's not going to help. Now, generally speaking, when I make my sketch, I do it using the grid method. This is where you draw a grid on your reference photo and you draw a grid on the paper that you're going to draw on and you just look at each square one at a time you draw what's in each square you're not looking at the drawing as a whole you're only looking at shapes in a square I think that stops your mind from making various assumptions on the shapes things should be or where they should go and lets you see a bit clearer what's actually there then once you've drawn the whole drawing out you can just erase the grid lines and you have a sketch now the next big mistake that I see people making is using the wrong reference photo the key to making stunning drawings with graphite pencil is contrast. If you have a really flat reference photo with no particularly strong lights or darks, it's just never going to look as good as one with amazing contrast. It really is worth the time getting a great photo. Now, generally speaking, if I want to take a photo of an animal for a drawing, the first thing I want to do is get down to that animal's level. You want to be at eye level with them. You don't want to be looking down on them. Also taking their photo next to a window for example is just going to give way more interesting contrast than if you're in an area with slightly flatter lighting. And then once you've got a great reference photo with the great contrast to work from you want to make sure that you really make the most of that. And that quite nicely leads me into my next point which is seeing people not build up the layers not building up the different pencils. If you just worked with just the HB pencil and you drew the whole drawing with just this your lights might be pretty good but your darks are not going to be anywhere near as dark as they could be or as they are in the reference now generally speaking what I like to do when building up colour is start with some of the harder pencils so start with the HB for example and gradually work my way towards the softer pencils. So I start off with the HB pencil, I'll draw everything out maybe not with huge amounts of detail but I just want to get in the main shapes and then once I'm happy with what I've got I'll then use a piece of tissue and blend it. This smooths it all out and removes that grittiness. I then with a little bit more detail will do a similar thing with a 3B pencil for example, maybe building in some of the texture this time and just allowing myself to perfect some of the shapes on the face. And then once I'm happy with that layer, I'll again blend it with a tissue and then I'll move on to the softest pencil, so the darkest pencil, maybe the 6B, fill in the absolute darkest areas and blend. And then from there, because I've lost a lot of the light and I really want to have really bright whites and really dark darks, I go back in with an eraser and add all of those light areas areas back in. Once I'm really happy with my lightest parts, I can go back to that very softest pencil, so the darkest pencil, add in all of the final details and really get that contrast, really get those dark areas where they should be. And that just creates a much richer, more realistic looking drawing. I also think it's more forgiving than just doing it with one pencil. There's more areas where you can make a mistake and then correct it later. Now before we move on to the next mistake, if you want to draw any of my drawings with me, they are are all available on my Patreon. I have a huge number of tutorials in both graphite pencils and colour pencils where you can draw along with me. Every tutorial includes in-depth instructions, the real-time footage, details of all of the pencils I'll be using, sketch outlines and of course the reference photo. And as I say I have not only graphite pencils but loads of colour pencil drawings too. I've drawn a variety of subjects from some more simple drawings like fruit onto much more complicated subjects subjects like this. Check out the link in the description. Now the final things that really a surprising amount of people do is all to do with fur texture. Now I frequently see people drawing a cat for example and putting all of the fur on the cat's face as the same length. So putting the same length fur on the nose as they do around the very edge of the face. But if you take a minute to actually look at a cat you'll notice that they have much shorter fur on their nose 
face and much longer fur around the edge. Their forehead is maybe mid-length fur. So you need to get across that the fur is different lengths on different areas. And you can do that by making different length flicks. So smaller flicks for shorter fur and longer flicks for longer fur. Just really focusing on the hair that is actually there. And the final thing is I see people putting fur going all in the same direction. Again, if we look at a cat, you'll notice that the fur is going in a number of different directions. It's certainly not all starting from the nose and working its way out. So when drawing the fur, you want to not only be thinking about the length of fur, but the direction of the fur. And getting that right is gonna make such a big difference in how realistic the end drawing will look. So those are the main things that you really want to be thinking about when you're drawing a pet portrait. Do let me know in the comments if you think any of these you may have been doing. Don't forget, if you want to draw this cat with me, it is available on my Patreon. Now I hope you found this video helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.